This past week, I've spent eight hours a day preparing for FNCS. I've coached loads of pro teams and helped them auto qual. I've created the FNCS Masterclass. I've brought you all the best tier ones, and I've played FNCS with the GOAT Resell himself. I've compacted all of the strats, all the tips and tricks, and every bit of information that I've learned into one short video. So please leave a like and let's get you your best ever FNCS placement. The first thing that I learned from FNCS week one is what the winners, Pink and Vico, did over on AU. These guys follow the exact same structure every single game, allow them to win three games in a row. Off spawn, they very quickly loot up and then they pad and scout for people nearby that they can easily wipe. This guarantees them early surge and it means they can do an extremely good strategy later on. When they're scouting, they spot one player that's split and of course they pinch from separate angles, jump on this play right here. And they do this every single game and secure themselves two free kills as well as loads of surge every single game which perfectly stacks them up for the rest of it. Then after this, they quickly use EMPs to get a load of fishing spots to get quick whites, and then they go and get the forecast tower nearby. They follow this exact same plan every single game. Now, after they get forecast, they're going to double back, go into storm, as well as get all of these extra floppers that they left on the floor from earlier. Then after this, they go up to this hill and they do this every single zone. The key thing to take away is not their exact strategy, but the fact that they follow this structure or this pattern or this script, whatever you want to call it, every single game. It's really important that you lay out what you guys want to do as a duo and you stick to it as close as possible. And they, these guys know this works. What they do is they wait for about 10 seconds left on the zone. They use their fizz and then now they're going to go ahead and pad and why are they padding deep in storm tanking loads of storm sickness early on is because it guarantees them that they're going to get to their cash first since they don't really get too much metal at their initial spawn they're deep in storm as their cash spawn which means they get a far away cash but compared to the other team that get this cash linked of course these guys are guaranteed to get there first as well as potentially even get one or extra cash every single game from doing this strategy because they're normally edge of zone. The next thing I learned is how to quickly wipe a team who's just doing the classic, building a two by two and holding their walls and playing super passively from Acorn and Colt. What these guys do is really smart. As they approach the box, Cold is going to go ahead and try to get bleed through damage the whole time. And he tries to get this other team to open up or try to fight him. You can see he's spraying the whole time, seeing if they're going to open up. And while he's doing this, Acorn is trying to get bleed through damage with this burst SMG the entire time. Next, this is the really important thing. Acorn sets up on this front wall. And as he does this, Cold is going to approach not just from the same angle, but from a completely different side, as well as a completely different layer. So Acorn's fighting on this side. And what does Cold do? He comes from the diagonal and he's one layer above, which is really important. So our team can't rebox upwards. He's got all the wall control. Then he's going to smack. And the other player, because he's getting pressured out by Acorn right here, grabbing this wall, the other guy is going to run straight into Cold. Cold's going to get the full piece, gets the triple edit on him from above, takes him out, and now they just push in and take out the solo. One important thing when you're trying to fight a solo is one of you should be spraying and breaking, and the other one should be trying to go ahead and replace the entire time. Take a look here. This guy's got cat mats. He can easily run away. However, the way that they prevent this is by acorn sprays and cold shoots the entire time as acorn is replacing which is really important one of the biggest mistakes that I saw a team making in fncs is playing super scared when they do not have good enough loot to actually secure a good placement i'm sure you guys probably have this happen a lot where you play a 20 minute game out and you get absolutely zero points you get like 15 points max and you've completely wasted your time it's much better to try to do something within the first 10 minutes of game specifically going for your cash as well just to secure some extra loot fighting a team for it as well rather than just playing extremely passively like this team does here they get a cash run sim, they're sitting on a pad and they just try to surge tag the team and now they're left in a position where they only have crash pads one big and then a couple flow berries for mobility and they're not even cat max as well and of course they're just gonna have a bad game you need to set yourself up for success no matter what round of fncs you're playing and it's definitely worthwhile being a little bit more risky in terms of going for cash or in terms of taking a mid game fight so you can set yourself up to do well every single end game that you play so you can get maximum amount of points the next thing that I learned from FNCS week one is, of course, from Kami and Seti. These guys always have some crazy strat. The first thing that they're doing is Kami is actually using the Enforcer AR. This thing has slightly buffed damage compared to when it first released, and it's actually pretty good for getting Storm Surge. This allows Seti to run just an SMG, so these guys both have loads of ammo to get Surge with the whole time. Next is they're sitting in double bushes either side of this train track. This means that they get all the benefits of being edge of zone, so loads of people rotating past them. They can farm loads of Surge for this stacked finals game, and of course, the downside of this normally is that you're on edge spot. It's going to be hard to rotate into the next zone. However, these guys, of course, have got some strap prepared. They wait for five minutes for the train to spawn in. 
The train rotates around the entire track every five minutes, slows down at the actual train stations, and these guys really smartly is sit in the front carriage next to each other and get surged the entire way into the zone. How you do this is you sit in the very front part of the track right here and nobody can see you, anybody ahead of you, let's say based up right here. First of all, the train's gonna slam into them, and secondly, they can't see you because you're sitting in the front, and these guys get a free rotation into the center zone without taking any damage. They trade surge along the way since they need a little bit more tags, and very smartly here is they hop out, refarm their mats, and of course, they know exactly where they can buy another big because of each train station is a healing vendor. If you farm gold or spawn, you're able to refresh your bigs throughout the entire game like they just did. The next thing I learned is how Acorn and Cold managed to get themselves in these absolutely god tier positions on the later zones. As you can see here, they're up on a hill with cat mats in an insane position and nobody else is in, in the circle. Everybody else is on congested side. So how do they do it? The key reason is they box below the loot island on the fifth zone. This means that they're able to use the rifts as this partial zone pulls in, which means they can have a free rotate whatever to the partial zone pulls. And the really key thing is where they choose to land. A lot of teams would make the mistake here of going towards the center zone or going towards dead side. However, Acorn and Cold really smartly decide to land on the edge of zone that isn't contested and they'd force other players away from them. The way they do this is Acorn builds a whole load of brick ramps and they're able to actually get a free kill from other players following their rotate in late. They force all these players away, they get a free kill right here just from spraying a solo that they knew was in this box, get that free kill and of course the zone pops and they're the only team in this position that's able to claim this spot and they get there nice and early and of course they win this game with 18 kills from this insane position. You could have maybe paused right there. Just thinking about it. Just because... Yeah. I mean, you get to this. I side. got blocked once and then... Yeah, and then your grappler's yeah. not charged. I think it might have been yeah. worth just here. You're in a very good spot to just pause and you still got 30 seconds to get in, you know? You just yeah. pause and you can look back, like look at all these free potential kills, you know? There's a team just grappling in the open. That's a free beam, you know? Wait like 10, 15 seconds and then you'll have two grapplers and then you can get to whatever spot you want to get to, you know? You could have got up to this tree, which isn't the biggest difference, but... It's better for next zone. You've got a bit of refarm as well, maybe. And then also yeah, you've got go. less risk of being next to a team. Like let's say this team next to you needs a refresh and they pre edit you because you're in brick again. Could happen. Yeah. And then also, yeah. also just quick, is if you paused, you would avoid now look, you're in the center of the zone. Look, there's there's people all directions around you, right? So let's say yeah. just for example, one of you whacked open edit and tried to get a beam and then you got cracked. It'll be so easy to get server focused. Low ground in middle of zone. Whereas, you know, ref's guide, you got ninth in finals. He's he's on dead side. He's on edge. It's a really small difference. But if you just pause there and then chill out. And also, you, because you're in a much better spot, you can spray and try to get a kill without the risk, you know, without playing super passive and not finding anything. Kami and Seti are known for being the masters of the low ground. However, this season, are actually taking and holding height throughout first moving until the final zone. So here's how they do that. Well, first things first is it starts much earlier in the game on their rotate to eight zone. They intentionally rotate late for this zone and they try to actually pre-tarp a little bit where possible. They find a nice refresh here, which gives them the mats to actually take height. They both get towards 200 HP and they let everybody rotate past them and they just try to farm as much surge as possible on these players flying through the air. Then at the last point, possible moment they're going to rotate into the dead side of this zone where it's expanding out into storms they're going to get into this dead side this is really simple but it's very effective to do because you save loads of mats you have no risk of getting sprayed and you can refarm like seti does here now once they're on dead side wherever zone pulls unless it pulls absolutely back towards where all these other height players are you can have an opportunity to take height like cami and seti do what they do is instantly rotate before anybody else. Nobody, of course, even looks at them because they're on dead side. And this means that they're in a perfect position to chop out tight. Kami does it with his SMG since he's got a suppressor on and the height team doesn't even realize until it's too late and they've already been chopped. And then now Seti builds up realizing the height team isn't able to contest them. And take a look how he builds up. It's really smart. He makes sure the whole time that he's building up is he's covering his head as well as his right hand side. So nobody on the server side can even spray him or deal damage to him. And he keeps on layering up the whole time while he's taking heights. Now that he's sufficiently layered up and he's actually protected, he now ensures that he's 45 meters below these other players, which means that nobody can grapple straight onto his heights and try to take it from him. It's really key that you're 45 meters from these sort of second height players, so they can't just fly up on you. Then as they come to the end of the zone, Kami does something really intelligent. As he realizes that they're not connected well enough at all, so what he does is he grapples towards second height, grapples down towards them, and then cranks and builds his way up 
pretty effectively on mats as you can see here there's some really cheap builds and just connects with one single metal build however now they're double connected either side they're gonna be able to hold and maintain height for the rest of the game and of course whenever you take height on the edge of the map the zone is never gonna pull far into the water because of how the zones actually work the zone's gonna pull back and now they have free high ground for the rest of the game the next thing i learned from this fncs again is high ground related is from playing the opens with restart i learned a lot from playing with him specifically about how bad we both are probably however one thing i learned from this specific game that we won was when the correct timing to go for height is in the current meta it's not really about the exact zone that you go for height but more so the conditions of that zone taking height on first moving like cami and seti do or even taking it later on can work the key things about this zone that allows us to take height is first of all is it's playing uphill so all these players down on low ground are forced to come up with the first ones up secondly is that high ground doesn't do a good enough job of realizing that zone is playing up right they're only two layers above us which is really bad it's very easy to get pumped if you're only two layers above the second hype team the next thing that's really important here and actually realized while i was in the moment is that it's playing to these old builds if i get to these old builds and tanks and storm ahead of the high ground team I'm going to be able to go ahead and take kite get the full box on the guy get a nice little minimum damage pump right there and i'm able to take kite and reese is able to get up to me and of course we win this game oh hey twice in a row my god those kids can handle it get ready for zone swap here this is your teammate's fault as you shouldn't ever ever be editing as the zone is about to swap, right? Uh, it's a very minor thing, but I saw you did it last game. With like three seconds left, I always recommend that you both just go into this front side box and you get ready for the zone swap. So you can insta go for the zone swap. And then also when you're in the front side box, you can look for a refresh easier, you know? Like where he's, obviously he doesn't know this, but like he's not going to find anything here. Zone plays max and suddenly all these teams could potentially hold you in a second, right? Yeah. So this is a 50 second zone timer. Zone's really bad. And look, you've wasted seven seconds, and then now you're doing a bad rotate, right? Like you're running out your box in the open. Obviously, you place it's there, but you could still be get beamed or let's say Lucy's ready for you to yes. leave your box. It's a very it's a very minor thing, but you could easily just waste the game because you're not ready for the zone swap, and then you get caught out by it, you know. Next is this god tier height retake by Vico. First of all, is he's tarping front side, and he realizes that height is actually playing on top of their build. Height is pretty much only connected to them so what do they do pink makes a nice call here to drop down a couple layers and keep on tarping away from height so height can no longer just mirror on top of them then vico tanks storm backside as you can see chops out height gets a little bit of counter damage on them and immediately pops a flopper and a shield fish and then looks back in storm insanely good awareness to realize that height who's been mirroring the top of their builds is only going to be connected from where pink and vico just were tarping he mantles up Gets a 300 tag, kills one and kills the other. And now these guys have got uncontested height with a double refresh, which of course is going to win them the game. Always think about where height is actually playing. Pink and Miko like to stay underneath height directly. And of course, this means later on when they go for height, they can reverse that. And they can go away from height and get free wins just like this by taking height at the correct a time. Bit more. A little bit more. Okay, you come get my builds. Yeah, come get yeah, my builds. Yeah, yeah, yeah Matt's my Matt's. 330 builds. What the the next thing I learned from this FNCS week is how important having a good mental is. And of course, you've got the clip of Archie milking. Archie tends to do it. However, he doesn't let it impact his teammate, right? He's going to try to keep coming for his teammate as much as possible. And he tends to reset in between games as well, which is really important. One big thing that I saw a duo make, I'm not going to mention who, is they let one bad game impact their entire tournament. And of course, you're not going to do well if you let that happen, especially in duos where you can, let's say, moan about how you died or you got headshot sniped or something out of your control, right? If you keep on moaning about that, your teammate's mental and your teammate's ability to play to their best, the next game is going to be completely shattered. Top tier pros that like to complain, let's just use Queezy's example, he loves moaning, right? Is he actually lets his mental reset between games. I'd really recommend that you guys just take a walk around, leave your chair for a little bit, reset fully and make sure your teammate doesn't hear you complaining the entire time. They're not going to be playing good after it. Archie here gave really good comments to his teammate and his teammate was able to clutch up the solo qual just from this end game, even though Archie did a pretty disastrous milk. Oh my God, yes, if he gets up until he, until he quals. I'm pumped, man. I think he's going to qual. 10 more points, 10 more points. Surely these players are shambles down below. I think he calls if these players make it here. Let's go.